Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, I was, uh, well, give you a quick update. Uh, BitChute is turning into garbage. Um, I've noticed my videos are not even playing. Uh, you can see them on the playlist, but you click on them, it says they're uh, zero seconds long. And you just click on it, nothing happens. And this is a new thing. Now, they're saying they're having problems, but I, I don't know. Other people said that they were kicked off. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's it hasn't been good. So, I guess... Bit shoots on its way out, or already is, really. I loaded up a video yesterday. I mean, you're talking like 16, 18 hours ago, and it still hasn't finished processing. Uh, you know, so it's, I don't know. And I send these guys $10 a month, or gals, or whatever they are. Uh, you know, I figured 10 bucks a month is good for hosting. Uh, sadly, some of my uh, videos on BitChute were getting more views than my videos on YouTube. I mean, I've got some videos on YouTube that have got quite a few views, but um, the uh, the big ones, you know, forget the big ones. But I mean, if I load a, a video, I might get 168 people. I don't know. But... Uh, some of the videos on uh, BitChute have got three, four hundred, which isn't a lot, but I'm just saying. And I don't care about numbers. I just, you know, try to reach people. That's all. But uh, I'm going to be on archive, A R C H I V E dot org. I'm going to load a few on there, probably some of the better ones. So just. Uh, because I honestly, I don't think we have much time. I really don't. But uh, this is going to be a Bible study, actually. And the text is going to be Daniel chapter 7. Now, my opinion is Daniel is probably the most difficult book in scripture at least for me it is maybe other people understand it better than i do i don't know but uh that's my opinion now i know this is kind of backwards but we're going to take a look at daniel chapter 12 and then we're going to go to daniel i think it's seven but i don't you know so get your king james bible turn it up to daniel chapter 12 Verse 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Now remember, this is the same Michael that uh, in Revelation 12 fought against the dragon. Oh yeah. So yeah, Daniel, I'm sorry, Revelation 12, verse 7, and there was, was, past tense, right? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Oh, yeah. So, back to Daniel 12. And at that time shall Daniel stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Oh, boy. Uh, that word trouble is what the meaning of the word tribulation is. Now, we're talking Old Testament was Hebrew. New Testament was Greek. So... Some words are synonyms. It's just 
what's a synonym? Just a different word that means the same thing, right? So, uh, like, like excited and exuberant. Same kind of word means the same thing, basically, right? And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. You know, this is Matthew 24, Mark 13 language. Verse 2. And many of them that, that sleep... And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Yeah. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. All right, listen to this carefully. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. The book of Daniel, the words are going to be shut up and the book's going to be sealed, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I did a Bible study on that. Knowledge shall be increased. What kind of knowledge? Well, I believe worldly knowledge. I mean, let's face it. For 5,000 years, people were running around with horses, running around walking or horses. And in the last 200 years, we've We've gone from horses to trains, automobiles, airplanes, jets, all this within the last 200 years. Less than, actually. The first train was, uh, I think, 1830s, right, right around the 1830s. I think they were invented in England, if memory serves me correctly. But, uh, you know, steam power locomotion and locomotion you know a locomotive uh it means crazy crazy movement <laughs> that's what a loco means it means crazy in spanish you know a locomotive locomotion because steam engines man you know but uh you know now people are flying in jets at fifty thousand feet above the earth well, maybe, I don't know, 30,000 for sure. Uh, that's about 10,000 meters for you uh, folks over in the EU. But, uh, I mean, it's amazing. The knowledge that has increased. I mean, I can go on the Internet today. Well, let's say 15, 20 years ago. You can go on the Internet and find almost anything that is in a library. Uh, there, of course, the uh, powers that be are hiding stuff now, but, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you could find almost anything on the Internet, almost anything. Go to the Library of Congress. They've scanned the books, you know. Well, they're, they're removing all that stuff now, but, I mean, it, it used to take, when I was in college, I had to go to the library, order books from another library, get an interlibrary loan, read it, look the stuff up. And now I can just uh, do a chapter search on the information that I'm specifically looking for. I mean, it's amazing. The Internet is just absolutely amazing. And, uh, yeah, there was a, a pastor I really, really respected. And uh, I said, you know, you should put your stuff on the Internet. And he's like, ah, the Internet's a bunch of evil stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, it is. I mean, let's face it. 
The top two things on the internet is gambling and porn. I said, that's true, Pastor, but you know what? What can you do? What about paper? What can you do with paper? You could either print Bibles or print Playboys. So that was my argument. He did put a few uh, things on the internet. But, uh, I mean, it's true. You know, you could either look at the book of John or you could look at a centerfold. And when I was in my 20s, I looked at centerfolds. But I don't look at centerfolds anymore. And mother of my children, if you ever listen to this, uh, I'm sorry. Really. What can I tell you? Yeah. I had a really good girl that the Lord sent me to as a wife. And uh, she, uh, she never did like me looking at that stuff. I don't blame her, but what can you do? Water under the bridge, people. I hope one day she'll forgive me. Daniel 12, 4, but thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood on the two, uh, stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Uh, evidently, these are angels. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Yeah, how long till the end of time? Matthew 24. Jesus was coming... Uh, the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and they asked him, you know, tell us, what's it going to be like at the end of the world? That's the Bob paraphrase, but yeah. Verse 7, And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, and he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Um, I believe in Revelation 12, it talks about time, times, and and half. Let me check. Let me pause, and I'll be right back. Yeah, Revelation 12, 14. And to the woman, the church, Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Oh, yeah. Got to watch that serpent, dude and gals. Uh, let's see. Revel, uh, Daniel 12, 7. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Uh, that's three and a half years, people. A time is a year, times is two, and, and a half. Um, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So, who's God's holy people? Its power is going to be scattered? Take a guess. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Okay, Lord, what's what's going on? What, when's all this stuff going to be the end? Verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of time. Many, did you catch that? For the words are closed up and sealed, sealed, Till the end of time, many shall be purified and made white. Oh, that sounds racist, doesn't it? Yeah. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. How come the wicked aren't going to understand? I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm confused, Chaplain Bob. What's up with that? 
All right, well, the uh, answer to that is in Matthew 13. Jesus had just told them a parable. Okay? Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Who's him? Jesus. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? You know, why are, why are you telling these stories? I don't get it, Lord. Jesus, verse 11, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. What? Yeah. They would understand, but those without wouldn't. Think about it. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear and not understand, and seeing and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Their spiritual eyes, people right? And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. You know, the Pharisees, uh, when, when Jesus healed the, the blind man, you know, uh, they asked him, well, how did you gain your sight? And he, he told them, well, Jesus, you know, uh, Jesus healed, you know, opened my eyes. Well, he didn't know that it was Jesus at first, but he found out later. Uh, I'm just doing a quick parable, paraphrase here. So, uh, yeah. And then he met Jesus. And uh, then the Pharisees came were following this guy and they, when he met Jesus. And they made that snarky remark. Are we also blind? Well, let's read John 9 real quick. Verse 24. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Now remember, Jesus had just opened the eyes of this guy that had been born blind. And they're calling Jesus a sinner. He, the blind, the formerly blind guy, he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we, not, we know not from whence he is. That's right, you blind Pharisees. You don't know where from whence he is. That's right. They're telling a true thing here. Verse 30. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know, I love it, this guy, this blind guy is preaching a sermon to these blind Pharisee Jews here. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? 
If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Oh yeah, here's the Jews. Thou wast born, altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when they fa had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see, I'm sorry, for judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see. Oh yeah, those that are blind might see. And that they which see, and that they which see might be made blind, spiritually blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Boy, that's some hard words, boy. All right, let's see. Back to Daniel 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Listen to this, verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the, uh, at the end of days, the days. And stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So all these words are going to be sealed up until the end of time. Now let's take a look at Daniel chapter 7. I might actually have a little bit of understanding. Something just kind of came to me and I, I don't know. Honestly, I was not planning on doing any more Bible studies, but um, sometimes things pop into my brain and I just like, oh, okay, maybe I should do a Bible study on this. You know, I'm not saying it's divinely inspired. You know, maybe I have an overactive imagination or sometimes I just kind of see things that aren't there. I don't know. You know, I'm just some guy that's read the Bible once or twice. That's all. You know. All right, Daniel chapter 7. All right, Daniel 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his uh, head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Okay. Now, well, let's see. Verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse, one from another. Uh, what is the sea? Uh, I don't want to make a big deal out of this, but, you know, people are thinking you know, Pacific or Atlantic. No, that's not what it's talking about here. All right, tie this in with Revelation chapter 17. I did a Bible study on this stuff. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. You know, I've done over a thousand Bible studies in the last six, seven years. 
Uh, I can't even remember them all anymore, but I know I've tied this together, but I'm telling you this, you know. All right. Um, Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now remember, there is a bride of Christ, the woman, and I. this might actually be part of the fulfillment of that. Um, and then there's the whore. There's a big difference between a, a, a virgin bride and a whore. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't know that, God's looking, uh, uh, God the Father's looking for a uh, virgin bride for his son, but the world's offering a whore. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Ah, the whore sitteth upon many waters. Keep that in mind. Waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornications. With the wine of her fornication. All right, uh, let's see. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Oh, yeah, Daniel's got some thing about horns, too. When you see horns, uh, you're talking about, like, kings. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. There's a verse in the Bible that says that Babylon was a golden cup in the hands of the Lord, or in the Lord's hand. I forget exactly, but Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Okay? So, this woman having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And everybody will tell you, oh, that's the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, no. She's one of the daughters, but she's not. the she, Rome is not the root. I'm sorry, but it's not. The Bible declares that Babylon killed the prophets. When did the Lord send his prophets to Rome? And the answer is never. I got a study on that. For however long tube lets me li uh, tell this stuff. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You know, when you read the book of Acts, who killed the saints of the Lord? It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Roman Catholic Church. She didn't even exist. No, it was the you-know-whos. Weren't they the ones... The Pharisees, weren't they the ones that opposed Christ? Weren't they the ones that opposed the prophets? I mean, the apostles? Well, John the Baptist was considered a prophet. You know? Yeah. Verse 7. And I got proof on that, too, if you're interested. I got Bible studies. Straight Bible. No opinion from me. Straight out of the Word of God. 
Who killed the prophets? Who killed the apostles? Who killed the saints? The book of Acts. Not thus saith Bob. Bob's nobody. The book of Acts tells you who they are. Verse 7. Revelation 17, 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. You know what perdition means? It means to fall. Fall from where? Didn't, didn't the devil, uh, the, the great dragon, fall from heaven? Yeah. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. What? You're going to tell me there's peoples whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Chaplain Bob, that's, that's Calvinism. That's a heresy. Well, I don't know if it's Calvinism or not. I've I've read almost very, very little, almost nothing of Calvin. Well, if you've ever read the Geneva Bible, you've, you've read the works of Calvin, because Calvin was very, very influ influential in writing the Geneva Bible, of which I used to have a copy. But uh, a you-know-who uh, ended up stealing it from me in a way, in a roundabout way. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Huh. That's something. Some people's names are written, some are not evidently. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, And here's the mind that which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And everybody will point to Rome and say, yep, she sits on seven hills. Well, guess what? So does Jerusalem, people. So does Moscow. So does Seattle, Washington. So... Verse 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Remember I told you the horns are kings? Well, yeah. Which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. And the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. Listen carefully. What are these waters? What is the sea, the waters? Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. 
Ah, that makes sense, Chaplain Bob. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Ah, okay. Verse 7. I mean, sorry, Daniel chapter 7. I guess we'll start from the beginning. Verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. S-C-A. Verse 3. And the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Well, what is a sea? It's water, right? The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, and I, uh, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth, of it between the teeth of it, and thus, and they the, uh, said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, I'm not saying this interpretation is right. I'm just throwing this out there for something to think about. What country symbol is a bear? Well, England is a lion, okay? Uh, the United States is an eagle, the bald eagle, right? What is Russia's symbol? The bear, right? The bear. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and thus, and they thus said, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Hit and lure was an amateur compared to all the millions and millions that Stalin killed. Stalin might wiped out millions of Christians in the last hundred years, in the last century. Well, not in 20 you know, not the 2000s, but in the 1900s. Between 1917 and, I don't know, even maybe even to today, you know, Stalin murdered millions. He made uh, that guy over in Germany uh, look like a, a boy playing in a sandbox compared to Stalin. So, arise, devour much flesh. The bear, Russia's symbol, is a bear. Verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Some people say that this symbolizes uh, Alexander the Great, and the four heads were his four generals that... Um, split the kingdom up into four parts after Alexander's death. He died when he was like in his early 30s. Uh, but I also find it interesting that uh, Germany was, uh, uh, they've been calling their tanks leopards for a long time, you know. So I heard that's one of their symbols. I don't know. All right, verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceeding, and it had great iron teeth. And it devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Ten kings, right? Now, I've heard, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard that they divided the world... The you know who's divided the world into ten regions. 
10 districts. Not sure I've heard that. All right. At verse 8, I consider the horns. Behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. So this last horn and this fourth beast are, you know, tied in together. This fourth beast is going to be different than anything that's ever been before it. But what are these three horns? Now, I don't know if this is true or not. Uh, this is just something I'm throwing out there. Because Daniel, to me, is a tough book. There are three city-states that some claim rule the world. One, Vatican City. The Vatican has supposedly over a billion followers. Okay. Vatican City sits inside of Italy, but it's not part of Italy. It is the religious part of this beast system, possibly. And then you have London. Do you know that the city of London is a corporation? It's not part of England. It is the, London was the, one of the original financial capitals of the world. And the owners of the city of state of the corporation of London are uh, some people that are uh, named uh, like Roth, you know, like angry, W-R-O-T-H, like he was Roth, he was angry. Uh, and then the last part of the name is child. So they were a very Roth child. And uh, the banking systems. And uh, every, virtually every country in the world has one of their banks as a central bank. And the United States, too. I mean, all these, the War of 1812 that we had with uh, England was because they didn't want to set up a central bank, which we got one in 1913. Um, that's why years later, they took the gold out of the coins. They took our gold coins that were legal tender for over 100 and something years, stole them. And then 30 years after that, they stole our silver coins. Now all we got is little pieces of paper. And then there's going to be a collapse. And then we're going to have uh, some kind of digital currency of some sort, way, shape, or form. 666, anybody? Yeah. All right, so you got Vatican City, City of London, and Washington District of Columbia, a city-state. Do you know what Columbia is? The District of Columbia. And Columbia is the name of a goddess. Yeah, a female god. Maybe she's the she kind of. I don't know. But uh, Columbia... Oh, have you ever seen uh, Columbia pictures? How about the country of Columbia? Who named that? Certainly not the people of Columbia. I'll guarantee you they didn't name it. Columbia, the goddess. Why is Washington, D.C. called the District of Columbia? Huh? Uh, so you got Vatican City, religious, London, financial, and then D.C., I suppose that's the military branch. I don't know. That's a, that's what I would guess. All right. Uh, so, verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. What's this little horn? Personally, I think 
end time Jerusalem is going to be the capital city of the one world of government. That's how I look at it. The Sanhedrin and what have you. That is my guess. As an educated guy that's been looking at current events, all the plans for the last couple uh, 2,000 years, and all the years I've done a Bible study. That's how I look at it. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Huh. Verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Who's this Ancient of Days? Christ. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. What books? The book of life and the book of not-so-life, I guess you could say. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame oh yeah as concerning the rest of the beasts they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time oh yeah i saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven he's going to come with the clouds that's what paul said and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him as dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Well, at least I believe... Um, I believe the Ancient of Days, I believe that's Christ. I, I'm i looking at it, and I'm not 100% sure, so don't hold me to that, please. All right, so verse 13, I saw the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, and that's what Christ called himself a lot, was the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this last end time kingdom is going to be a beast, all right. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in my, and in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretation of things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever forever even for ever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of, of iron. Now, when you trace back teeth of iron, the first time the word iron appears, I think it's in Genesis 4, but it's tied in with the children of Cain. Not a good thing whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoureth, break in pieces, and stamp the residue with his feet. And the ten horns that were in his head 
and of the other which came up and before whom three fell. Is this the three city-states? I'm not sure, but it, it wouldn't surprise me. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. That horn made war with the saints. So evidently, this is the end-time beast and prevailed against them. So they're going to get their rear ends kicked. That's basically the Bob translation. Verse 22. So, I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came. So I was right. This is Christ. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Guess what, people? The Bible says that we're going to judge angels. Uh, and here's that guy that they, the Hebrew Roots people hate. Paul. 1 Corinthians 6.3. Boy, they hate Paul. Paul says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Boy, I tell you what. Whatever angel God assigned to me, I'm going to have to give him a lot of credit because I'll tell you what, he kept me from dying a few times. Actually, more than a few, but uh, yeah. Daniel 7.22, Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse. It's going to be different from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. The whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and there shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. Yeah, he's going to change the times. Probably from B.C. and A.D. to B.C.E. and C.E. Okay, B.C. used to stand for before Christ. Now they say B.C.E. stands for before the common era, as in Christ being the common era. They're devils. Uh, let's see. And think to change times and laws. From the Ten Commandments to the Noahide laws, the seven Noahide laws, right? And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Three and a half years. 1260 days. 42 months. That's what the book of Revelation says. About three and a half years. It's going to be literally hell on earth. And they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my Cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Oh, yeah. And that, people, is what I kind of think those three kings are the Vatican, London, and D.C. The District of Columbia, the goddess. Yeah. And you know what? We really didn't have 
the District of Columbia. I believe, if memory serves me correctly, it was not set up until after the Civil War. And the Civil War was not about slavery. It was about federal, the federal government wanting total control. Because the, basically the federal government only had two jobs that I can think of. One, commerce from foreign countries. You know, importing and exporting goods. You know, and, and making treaties with other countries. You know, having ambassadors and what have you. And two, protecting us from foreign countries fighting against us. That was their job. But now they control everything. Commerce, education, uh, you name it, they control it. States have very, very little power anymore. So, it wasn't about slavery. It never was about slavery. They only say that so they can inflame the a certain group of people to hate a, another certain group of people. And if I have to spell it out, you know, Look into who created the NAACP, a rabbi. And then, uh, yeah, the one was actually a rabbi. Yeah, he looked pretty, uh, you know, he looks like he came from Africa, right? Yeah. Yeah, the NAACP. So, all right, well, I guess this is, uh, this is it. Like I say, uh, Bright Eon's dead. Bitshoot's dying, if not dead. And um, I tried that World Truth video. I, did, I loaded one video, and then I tried loading another, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't take. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with that. So I'm going to try archive.org. I'm not going to put very many Bible studies on it. Just a few. Something that I consider end times knowledge for what's coming and uh, stuff that the churches don't teach anymore you know like like the uh, the man of sin the beast the uh, and you know the end time antichrist the man of sin son of perdition uh, that kind of you know he comes first before Jesus but uh, the pre-trib churches teach no 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 jesus comes first what i don't know you know they can only get away with this garbage because people won't read their bible i guess they're too busy watching uh dancing with the idols oh i'm sorry dancing with the stars american idol uh yeah dancing with the idols yeah i guess i had it right the first time so all right, people, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.